Wouldn't it be great to block all or most of the nerves of the knee without getting any motor weakness? If you're finding that your total knee patients just aren't quite as comfortable as they could be, then this video on genicator blocks is for you. The genicular nerves are often zapped in the pain clinic for chronic osteoarthritic pain, but for our purposes, we're going to look at how to target them preoperatively to reduce acute pain after total knee arthroplasty. You may be wondering, wait, another block for total knees? We're already doing an adductor canal block and an IPAC block, right? The rationale for blocking these has to do with the way the knee is innervated. So let's take a brief look at that. Here we have a view of the knee joint from the back. The sciatic nerve descends from the thigh, splitting into the tibial and common peroneal nerves. And from the sciatic nerve, or its two components, arise the genicular nerves that wind around from back to front. Here's the front view. Now, there are four cardinal genicular nerves that we're after. The superomedial and the inframedial both come off the tibial nerve to innervate the medial part of the knee. The supralateral and infralateral arise from the common peroneal nerve to take care of the lateral part. And then, because of course we couldn't just have an even four, we also have the recurrent peroneal nerve that helps supply the inferior lateral joint structures. You can see from this figure that these contribute significantly to the innervation of the anterior knee joint. Of course, these nerves complement the articular fibers that we get from blocking the femoral or adductor canal, as well as the popliteal plexus, which innervates the posterior capsule. If you want to see how those nerves are blocked, we have separate videos and there are links to those in the description. So to get back to our five genicular nerves, note that as is often the case, these nerves run alongside arteries and we'll frequently see these as a surrogate landmark. The genicular nerve block technique involves using ultrasound to visualize the bony anatomy of the knee joint and then depositing local anesthetic at each of these locations. So here are the probe positions. For the two superior nerves, the probe is parasagittal and angled at 30 to 45 degrees so that you're catching the anterior lateral and anterior medial femur, kind of like the old 10 and 2 o'clock of the steering wheel. You're looking for the bright hyperechoic line of the femur. Once you get that, you'll move the probe distal towards the joint until you see the femur flaring up to become the epicondyle. As a reality check, when you're in the correct location, the superior edge of the patella should line up with the exact center of your probe. As mentioned, another useful landmark is the small genicular artery that can often be seen right where the femur starts to slope up, although it's not always visible. The genicular nerves are quite small, and for that reason we don't try to visualize them on ultrasound. Instead, the needle is directed to contact bone at the bottom of the slope in the general vicinity of the artery. I find it much easier and faster to advance the needle out of plane. While you may not see the shaft of your needle, the endpoint for advancement is bony contact, so it's less important. Once we hit the bone, we'll aspirate and then inject about 3 to 4 mils of local anesthetic. Then we'll do the superior lateral genicator block on the other side of the femur. It's pretty much a mirror image of the superior medial one. For the inferior medial, we'll image the slight depression on the flare of the tibia. If you're going to see a genicular artery, this is often the one you'll see. Come in out of plane and land in the depression. This is the shallowest block, and there's not much tissue there, so sometimes we'll only inject about 2 to 3 mils. And now we'll get the last two nerves with one probe position. We'll start by placing the probe over the head of the fibula from the lateral side of the knee. The rounded fibular head is an easy starting landmark. Then I'll slide the probe superiorly and slightly medially, so I'm imaging a bony hump. The proper name is Gertie's tubercle. It's a prominence on the tibia where the IT band inserts. On the proximal side of the hump, you can often see the IT band and the genicator vessels trapped in the soft tissue space beneath. A needle can be advanced out of plane to pass just beneath the band, and 3 to 4 mils here fills that space and blocks the inferior lateral genicator nerve. Next, we'll go back to the hump and move distally. We can see the fibers of the tibialis anterior muscle here and the slope of the lateral proximal tibia. We want to drive a needle out of plane down to that slope and place 3 to 4 mils of local there. Once again, we can frequently see genicular vessels to guide us, but if not, just land on the slope and lift the muscle up. We like to use a total of 20 mils of local anesthetic here, preferably something long-acting. We'll use about 3 to 4 mils for each of the 5 blocks. These blocks are easy to do. Anytime the endpoint is hit a bone, it's pretty simple to teach and learn, and they can be done in about 90 seconds from start to finish. The next question is, do they work? Well, they sure do. This randomized controlled double-blind study compared patients who received genicator blocks with quarter percent bupivacaine to those who received sham saline blocks. Every patient got a standard general anesthetic, an inductor canal catheter, and an IPAC block. 
The group who got the real geniculator blocks used 60% less opioids in the first 24 hours and 50% less in the second 24 hours. For an intervention that takes less than two minutes to do, that's a lot of bang for your buck. Here are some things we learned along the way. Despite it being the biggest long bone, it's surprisingly easy to miss the femur. Toggle the probe back and forth until you see the bright white line that represents the beam hitting the cortex directly. The hazy structures either side represent the beam catching the femur tangentially. Second, remember that with out of plane, you want to keep your needle angle as close to the beam as possible. Otherwise, you may miss the femur entirely. There has been concern raised about targeting the inferior lateral and recurrent peroneal nerves when using neuroablative techniques because of the proximity to the common peroneal nerve. Nobody will thank you for causing a long-term foot drop, but using the technique we described with a small dose of local anesthetic and ultrasound guidance, we just don't see this, and for that reason, we do perform the inferior lateral blocks. Like a lot of bony contact blocks, the muscle can be adherent to the bone. We like to use saline to test if our needle tip is truly on the periosteum. That way, we're not wasting local anesthetic. If we do see intramuscular spread, it's useful to do a little twizzle with the needle to break through those last few layers of soft tissue. Because we're doing these close to the joint, we are super attentive to sterile technique. Use a probe cover, sterile gloves, and lots of skin prep to avoid the risk of joint infection. Finally, while we're in the vicinity, we also block the nerve to vastus intermedius, just above the knee. It lies in a reliable location running along the anterior surface of the femoral shaft, and it's easy to target while you're doing the geniculars. Bring the needle down out of plane and place the usual three to four mils there. If you've been counting, that's a total of six injections of three to four mils, so one 20 mil stick of local anesthetic is absolutely sufficient. Genicular blocks are safe, easy, and have contributed significantly to our patient's comfort after total knee replacement. If you're doing an adductor canal block, IPAC, and genicators, you've almost completely blocked the knee in a way that allows for maximum comfort afterwards. I say almost because there's one more set of simple blocks that we use to get even more pain relief with knee patients the anterior femoral cutaneous nerves. To learn about those, check out this video.